Hallelujah for Jesus. Hallelujah. That Jesus is the one true God. He's the only way to salvation. Hallelujah. He's our healer. Amen. He's our Savior. He's our deliverer. And He's the soon coming King. Now, if you look out into the world, you'll see two things. The day of the Antichrist and the day of the return of Christ. He's coming back. Make sure you're ready. Say this, say, I'm rapture ready. Say, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to be taken on the first load. You do not want to be left behind. Because this is nothing compared to what it's going to be once we're out of here. This is, this is nothing right now. All hell's going to break loose. So make sure you're ready and make sure you're in church. Sitting under the, come on now. Sitting under the word of God. Ain't not just playing church, but being the church. Amen. Um, I saw today on Fox News that today is National Anthem Day. I did not know that. We're going to pray for our country. I love our country. How many love our country? Amen. And our country's not going down. Because God's about to turn some things around. Amen. So let's pray for our country. Let's pray for America. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we lift up the United States of America before you this morning. In the name of Jesus. And I want to thank you, Father, if this nation is returning to her roots. This nation is returning unto the principles, the Judeo-Christian values on which and by which she was founded in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father, that our best days still lie ahead. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he won our victory. So we're not about to go down in defeat. No, no. No, no, we're not victims. We are victors, praise God, in Christ Jesus. And so I declare in the name of Jesus that this nation's blessed and not cursed. Amen. And the body of Christ is rising up in her authority in the name of Jesus. And walking circumspectly and walking uprightly before God and before men in the name of Jesus. Thank you now, Father, for a mighty harvest of souls that are being released right now to flow into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for it. That today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your healing. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day for you to be set free from whatever it is that's holding you back. Whatever it is that's holding you captive. Today is your day to be set free. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, you can be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Liberty Worship Team. Give them a hand clap, please, as they come down off the platform uh, this morning. Amen. I heard a joke. I'm not sure if I should tell it or not. Anybody religious in here? Huh? Anybody religious in here? There was this preacher. He's trying to raise his son right. And so he brought out a Bible, set it on the kitchen table, brought out a silver dollar, set it beside the Bible, brought out, a, brought out a bottle of whiskey, set it on the table, brought out a Playboy magazine, set it on the table. And so he knew if he picked the Bible, he's going to be a preacher. His son would be a preacher. If he picked the silver dollar, his son's going to be a banker. If he took the bottle of whiskey, he's going to be a drunk. If he took the Playboy magazine, he's going to be a womanizer. So he hid in the closet to see what a, what a son is going to take, you know. And his son comes out there. He's hiding in the, preacher's hiding in the closet, you know. Son comes out there. And 
looks at all four items, picks up all four and walks off. Preacher goes, oh no, he's running for Congress. <laughs> it's about right, isn't it? It's about right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I should have picked the Bible. And then just walked off. Amen. Praise God. Did you bring a Bible this morning? Hold it up real high. Let's make our confession. Say this. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. This morning, I'll be taught the Word of God. I'll never be the same. My ears are open. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the never-changing, the ever-living, the indestructible, the incorruptible seed of the Word of the living God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 26. The book of Acts, chapter 26. Now, here in the 26th chapter of the book of Acts, the apostle Paul is testifying before King Agrippa. He's telling about his conversion experience. How many of you have been converted? How many are here this morning? Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, let me ask you a question. Paul here is testifying of his conversion experience. If you got arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? I pray there would be. <laughs> I pray there would be. Amen. So the apostle Paul here is testifying before King, Agri King Agrippa, telling him about his, ex his experience of when he got kicked off or knocked off, <laughs> I should say knocked off his high horse. You ever been knocked off your high horse? That means you thought you knew the answer. You are convinced that you knew the answer. You argued about it, found out you were wrong. You just got kicked off your high horse. Amen. See, when you're full of pride, you're headed for a fall. It's good to be humble. That's something that even preachers got to be mindful of is to be humble before God and before men. Amen. So Paul got kicked off his high horse, knocked off his high horse, I should say. Now look at verse uh, 16. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people, and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes, say to open their eyes, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, say from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance. Say inheritance. Now circle that word inheritance in your Bible. That's vitally important. It's often overlooked or just kind of glossed over. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient. Say, I was not disobedient. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Now, this right here, verses uh, 18 and 19, is the original assignment that the Lord Jesus Christ bestowed upon the church through the Apostle Paul, who was and is the greatest apostle of faith who ever lived. So this is not just the Apostle Paul's assignment. This is every believer's assignment. This is your assignment. This is 
every pastor's assignment. What is our assignment? Well, look at verse uh, 18 again. To open their eyes. A lot, of people, a, lot of people, a lot of people's eyes are closed today. That's why they don't go to church. They're blinded, deceived. They aren't following God. They're following their flesh. I'm preaching pretty good this morning. Amen. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. You know that religion's darkness? I was in darkness for years. Read my Bible, went to church, but I was in darkness. I didn't know the truth. I'd go out, go to the tool shed, which was a discotheque. That's where I met my wife. Thank God for the tool shed. That's where, that's where I met her at, out on the dance, out on the dance, dance hall. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But then God got a hold of me. I got saved. Haven't had a, a drink since. I come home. I come home at night after having several beers, and I'd be drunk. I'd read my Bible before I went to bed because I was religious. Didn't mean a thing to me. Didn't know what it meant, but I was religious. You know, you can be religious and go straight to hell. You know that? Jesus came to save the lost. He didn't come to save the righteous. The Pharisees, they already thought they had it. They already thought they were righteous. They knew everything. They knew the word of God. They thought they did, but they didn't know the power of God. They didn't have a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Preaching pretty good this morning. Amen. So religion is darkness. It's bondage. You wonder why God hates sin so much? Because it's bondage. Sin is bondage. Living for the devil and living for your flesh is bondage. It is not freedom. Amen. I got so tired of religion, I just went out in the world and just had a high old time. But actually, some of you have a problem with this. I was more free when I was in the world than when I was religious. A lot more free. Because people who are religious are in great bondage. Great bondage. They'll argue with you. Did you ever notice that people who are religious are mean? They have a mean spirit about them. They'll cut you. They'll, they'll, they'll cut you. Argue with you. No, nothing about the love of God. Paul was religious. Huh? Paul was religious. I mean, he held Stephen's coat while he's being stoned. He, he followed the law to, to the T. But he wasn't saved. He didn't know God. When somebody truly really knows God, they have the love of God in their hearts. You can't hate on your brother and be saved. Amen. I say amen. amen. Praise God. When you're, when you're truly saved, God's love is in you. Now, of course, you've got to yield to it, and you got to walk in the light of it. Are you following me? But if you're truly saved, then God's love has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, and you have a love for your brethren. Amen. I say amen. What's our assignment? To open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance. What does that mean? What's our inheritance? That gets glossed over by, by religion. They don't talk about this. But I talk about it a lot because it's in the Word of God. What's our inheritance? Our inheritance is everything We've been redeemed from. That's our inheritance. We've been redeemed from the second death. Hello? What's that mean? That means heaven's our inheritance. We've been redeemed from sickness. So healing and health are 
our inheritance. We've been redeemed from lack, so abundance is our inheritance. We've been redeemed from the curse of the hard life, so the blessing, say the blessing, the blessing is our inheritance. So in other words, to make it as simple as I know how, whatever belongs to us through Christ's redemption, that's our inheritance. That's our inheritance. Amen. So in other words, our assignment then, according to God's word, is to lead people out of darkness, out of religion, and tradition, and lead them into revelation of their redemption in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, so many people, they get saved, marvelously saved, born again, and then after a few years goes by, they just get religious. There's more joy in most taverns than there are in most churches. That's not right. Something's wrong there. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Liberty. Not bondage, but liberty. Some of you need to smile this morning. You've been frowning all morning. You need to smile. Put a smile on your face. Praise the Lord. You're in church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Serving God is freedom. I love something that Dr. Mark T. Barkey said one time. You ready for this? He said, you don't get burn out by serving God. You get burnt out by resisting God. People get burnt out in ministry because they're resisting God, trying to do it in the flesh. You got you to stay in the spirit. So you got to stay in the spirit. That's why so many God's people get burnt out serving God. They don't walk with God. And that's right, they get religious. They're still born again, but they're religious now. Moving right along. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. We're all to be leading people out of darkness and into the light. Leading people and delivering people from the power of Satan unto God. Everybody has that assignment, not just preachers. I mean, preachers too. Amen. That's what Brother Hagin got a hold of when he was 17 years old. And God raised him up from the bed of sickness. He's born with a deformed heart, had an incurable blood disease. And by his 16th birthday, to be exact, four months before his 16th birthday, He's totally bedfast and paralyzed from his, waist, from his waist down. He's totally bedfast for 16 months. Not much, you know, hope for a young boy. You know, he's told by the doctor that he's not going to live very much longer, that he's going to die in an early age. Doesn't give a young boy very much to live for, does it? But he had a Bible. Came across Mark 11, 23, and 24. And he said to himself, you know, this is true. If this is really true, I'm coming off this bed of sickness. I'm not going to die in early age. This is really true. But he lacked the revelation. But he kept reading those two scriptures. He just kept reading them. He read them probably probably a thousand times or more. Finally, he's reading Mark 11, 23, 24 one day, and a light came on. He saw it. He saw something he didn't see before. He saw what he needed to do. He saw he needed to act on the word of God. He was, up till then, he was basing his prayer and basing his faith on a feeling. If he didn't feel healed, then his mind, well, I guess I'm not healed then. But he finally saw it in Mark 11, 24. 
What things ever you desire when you pray? Believe. When do you believe? When you pray. Believe you receive them. See, in your heart. In your heart. Not in your head, in your heart. And you shall have them. Oh, wow. And so he finally saw it. You know, the Holy Spirit shined the light of truth on the Word of God. Amen. You can't just be religious about the Word of God and get your healing. Or come out of debt. You got to believe with what the Word of God says. With your heart. Amen. And so he thought, well. If I'm healed, then what am I doing in this, on this bed of sickness then? And so all the strength he can muster, he grabbed hold of that bedpost, pulled himself up. And his legs were, he was paralyzed from the waist down, so he picked up his feet and threw him across the side of the bed, and they dangled there. He couldn't feel them, but he could see them, his feet. And he made this declaration. So you got to say it. You got to say it. You, you can't just think it. You got to say it. He said, I declare that I am healed and that I will walk. He declared it. He said it. And so he put his weight on his feet. He's paralyzed. He said, The power of God hit him. Oh, glory to God. He felt a warmth start at the top of his head. And go all the way down through the soles of his feet, all the way down through the tips of his toes. Felt like two million pins pricking him. But it felt good because he could feel it. He could feel something now. He got up. He walked out into the kitchen and had breakfast with his family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I got to correct something that I said Wednesday night. You know, if I make a public mistake, then I got to correct it publicly. If I make a private mistake, then I got to correct it privately. Okay, I said that he was raised by his, his parents. Well, his daddy left the family at a very early age. So he was raised primarily by his mama and his mama's parents, which were his grandparents. So he walked out into the kitchen, had breakfast with his family. Praise God. Amen. God raised him up. How? By believing and acting on Mark 11, 23 and 24. But see, what changed it for him is when the revelation came, when the Holy Spirit shined the light of truth on the Word of God. Amen? Well, he then entered the ministry, and for the next 50 plus years, he was leading people out of darkness and into the light of God's word, leading people from the power of Satan unto God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And people from many denominations got set free of religion and tradition through his ministry. And I'm one of them. I say, and I'm one of them. Praise God. And I thank God for Brother Hagin. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> go to uh, Proverbs chapter 29, please. Proverbs chapter 29. Now look at verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, say no vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, let me read that to you from the Amplified Bible. It's really, really good. And it'll help to clarify and substantiate what we're talking about here this morning. The Proverbs Chapter 29, verse 18, the Amplified Version. Where there's no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. You got that? No redemptive revelation. The people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, follows the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable. Enviable is he. Let me ask you a question. What is redemptive revelation? Hmm? It's revelation that opens your eyes 
so that you can see the light of God's word and walk into your redemptive rights and privileges. Praise God. Amen. Now go to uh, Psalm chapter 119. Psalm 119. Praise God. And uh, look at verse 105. Thy word, say thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And notice here that God's word is a lamp. Say a lamp. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You know that God has a path for you? As a born again believer, he's got a path for you. He has a path to victory, a path to healing and health, a path to deliverance, a path to abundance. You know that? Yeah, he does. Amen. Well, God's word shines a light on our path. So you can see how to get there. But if you don't spend time in the word, if you don't come to church, if you aren't hearing the word of God, you won't know what to do. You'll take the wrong path that's going to lead to destruction, and then you'll get mad at God about it. He had nothing to do with it. No, the Bible says the thief, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, Jesus said. You might have life. You might have it more abundantly. Amen. So God wants to lead you to victory, praise God. Amen. Now, the word of God is light. Revelation opens your eyes. So you can see the light. Just like if you're in a dark room, you can't see where to go. You're going to bump into something. Turn the light on, now you can see where to go. And you can find what it is that you're looking for. Are you following me? Amen. So revelation opens your eyes so you can see the light of God's word. To walk into your inheritance and lay claim to your redemptive rights. Hallelujah. Now go to... Um, Ephesians chapter 1, please. Ephesians chapter 1. Now, Paul here is praying for the church at Ephesus. And we call these prayers, Paul's prayers, actually, they're Holy Ghost prayers. This is a prayer... The Holy Ghost gave to the Apostle Paul to pray for the church at Ephesus. We can pray these prayers over ourselves and over one another. Do you know that? They're powerful prayers. Paul prayed, starting in verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Say revelation. Revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Do you see it? of his inheritance in the saints. So when you pray this prayer over yourself, you're praying that your spiritual eyes would be open, that your, and that your understanding would be enlightened so that you may walk into your inheritance and experience your redemptive rights and privileges. Now, the devil's going to lie to you. He's going to say, well, you don't really qualify. Because of your past life. Wait a minute, are you born again? Amen. Then your sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the devil's greatest fears 
is you'll read your Bible, you know, wipe the dust off of it, get it off the, the shelf, wipe the dust off of it, and, and read it, and find out what God truly says about you. Once you do, your days of living a defeated life are over. Amen? Huh? Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now, go to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. And look at verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet. Say meet. Now, the word meet there means able. It also means qualified or fit. So you can read that like this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us fit, able, meet, or qualified. Say qualified. Qualified to be what? To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Hallelujah. You see that in your Bible? So we have an inheritance, don't we? We're going to be leading people into their inheritance in Christ Jesus. Not just making them religious. So said, well, the important thing is you, is you go to church somewhere. No. Go to the right church. Find out where God wants you to go and then go there. Amen. Amen. For years, I went to church but learned very little, if anything. But then, God led me to a church in Urbana, Illinois, called New Life Faith Christian Fellowship. That's where I received my spiritual training. And thank God I did. I said, thank God I did. Amen? Amen. So find out where God wants, wants you to go to church and then go there and get plugged in. Don't just hang around. Get plugged in. Find out what God wants you to do there. Start serving. Say, I love my pastor. I love you too. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us able, fit, meet, qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath already delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath already translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption. Oh, glory to God. Says we have redemption. The word have is past tense. Doesn't say we're going to have redemption. It says we already have redemption. From what? Well, number one, second death. Number two, sickness, disease, and pain. Number three, poverty. Number four, we've been redeemed from the curse of the hard life through his blood. Hallelujah. Say through his blood. through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' mighty name. So God wants to use the inheritance you walked into and that you are walking in and the blessing that has come upon you to attract others into his kingdom. This blessing, we talk about it around here a lot, is not just for you, you're for no more. It's to be used by God to attract the world to come into God's kingdom. That God's a good God. Amen. That he saves, that he heals, that he delivers. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then your pastor is cool. He's a cool dude. Amen. So bring your friends to church, praise God. We won't hurt them. We'll help them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, last scripture. Then we're going to receive the offering. Go to um, Isaiah chapter 61, and you'll see it. Isaiah chapter 61. Good to have a cool pastor. And got my line I tie on this morning. Because they won yesterday, praise God. They won on the road, Pat. Yep. At Wisconsin. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I watched it with my son, praise God. All right. <laughs> praise the Lord. Okay. Isaiah chapter 61. Look at verse uh, 8. For I, the Lord, love judgment. Now, the word judgment there in the Hebrew actually means justice. For I, the Lord, love justice. We're about to see justice in this nation. You're about to see justice in the body of Christ. You're about to see justice in your life. 
Just stay true to God, amen? And you're going to see justice. Keep coming to church. Keep tithing. Keep praying. Keep reading your Bible. <laughs> For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. That's the heathen. And their offspring among the people. And all that see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God blessed Abraham to make him what? A blessing. And he's made that same blessing available to you and me. Why? To make you a blessing. To make you a blessing. Amen. And God wants you to use, God wants to use you and use that blessing that has come upon you to lead others into their inheritance in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now let, let's stand, please. Praise God. I'm going to speak the blessing over you. And then we're going to receive the offering. And uh, you're going to tie it to the blessing. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This is... Good ground for you to sow your seed into. It will produce a harvest for you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's good for you to sow seed into good fertile soil. Find out where God wants you to hook up. Then hook up there. And that's where your tithe belongs in. Amen? Don't go where you want to go. You'll pick the wrong church every time. Find out where God wants you to go. Find out who your man of God is. And that's where you to go to church. Amen? And if I'm your man of God, we'll receive you and we'll love on you. Amen. Amen. And we'll disciple you and we'll help you and we'll train you in the things of God. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that every family represented here this morning is blessed and not cursed in Jesus' name. And so I say to you in the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord let up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.